Hi there, I'm Jill and today I wanted to give you a quick tutorial about how I cut my stickers. A lot of people ask me questions about the cutter I use, the kind of paper, where I get my paper from, how I print on it, and just the overall process of cutting stickers. So I thought why not film a walkthrough from start to end, from adding the image into the software until we have the final result. So let's get right to it. This is the software I use. I use the Silhouette Studio 4.2 or 4.5, I'm not quite sure which version this is, uh, but it comes with the cutter that I use, which is a Silhouette Cameo 3. While it is a free software, I would highly doubt you'd have any need for it other than using it with a Silhouette Cameo cutter. Getting started is fairly simple. First you go to the Open tab and find the file you would like to cut. It needs to be a PNG file, so you have a transparent background. Regardless, there is still some processing to be done, even if you're using a PNG. Then we go with setting up the paper that we are going to use. This is your sheet, your sticker sheet rather, and it needs to be A4 if you are cutting on A4 like I am. This depends entirely on the type of sticker paper that you are using. And I use this setting, the Cameo Sheet Type 1, to give it registration lines. These registration lines are what the cutter uses in order to identify the position of your sheet. Today we are going to be cutting a Nyan Neko Pennywise, which I am doing as a Halloween special this year in tribute to the movie that just came out. First things first, every PNG has extra invisible transparency. Obviously it is a transparency but it is part of an image when it comes to the software we are using. So we need to remove this extra space that you see on the sides over here. We can do that by going to the trace tool. We select trace area and drag all over the image until it selects the character. We then go to the threshold and raise the threshold to make sure that it covers the entire area and nothing else that we might not want. We then go on trace and detach, give it a second to process, and then if we click in the invisible area around it where the remainder of the box was, you can see this is the extra space on the PNG that the cutter doesn't recognize or doesn't care for, basically. Now the software can recognize the actual outline of the character rather than a box, which what essentially what the image was prior to that. Next step is to resize the character and make it as small or as big as you would like it to. I am going to size it down most of my Nyan Nyan Echo stickers are of an average size, so I'd, I would like to calculate that this character also fits with the rest of the set. And there we go. This is the size that most of my Nyan Nyan Echo stickers come in. Next we are going to add a bit of an outline around it. I would rather not have the cutter cut too close to the image. And I always go with the same kind of thickness for all my stickers. We select the character and go up to the star icon up here and create an offset for the software to recognize as where it will start cutting the outline of the sticker. Now you can add or subtract to the number here. It is in millimeters for me, however you can also always convert it to inches instead if you prefer. However, I would like to keep it as is, so we're just going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to drag and highlight both the outline, the offset and the character. I'm going to right click on it and group. That way, now it is one entire thing. Next we are going to fill in our sheet to fit in as many little cute creepy Pennywises as we can. One thing to keep in mind 
is that you cannot be too far close to the edge. As you can see, the registration marks here create the sort of bleed in the image. You have to be inside of that bleed and kind of give quite a little bit of space from the edge so it doesn't send the machine haywire because these cutters are very delicate more than you can imagine unfortunately and you need to work with them as much as you possibly can next we are going to go to this icon here which also looks like a star but um, it's a strange looking shape and you can add as many of the characters as you like using these icons here. I am going to add two Pennywise and then I'm going to click on the middle one and rotate it in a way that the middle one is upside down. This will allow us to win some space onto the sheet. We're going to highlight these, go back to this and then two more sets and that's it we have officially created a sticker sheet it's not that difficult is it I am sure that if I played around with it a little bit I might be able to win some space and add more characters to it but I don't know if it's really worked it that much let me have a little play around and I will be back with you in just a second and there we go by placing and spacing the characters a little bit better on the sheet, we managed to win one more space, where before we could have nine characters, now we have ten. That is always good in the long run, conserve on paper, which can be a little bit expensive, as well as, uh, as, well as helping Mother Nature a little bit. Next we are going to start printing, and then we are going to cut the sticker. So let's proceed. Next step is to start printing. When making stickers, the type of paper you choose is very important. You can choose to have matte stickers or glossy stickers for one, vinyl or whatever isn't vinyl, I, I have no idea, I just don't really use vinyl. I know that uh, a lot of people who work with planners, they like to use thinner paper than vinyl, as vinyl can be quite thick. This is the kind of paper I use. It is from Photo Paper Direct, I buy directly from their website, and it is glossy vinyl A4, comes in packets of uh, 40 sheets, 20 plus 20, and it is uh, self-adhesive glossy vinyl. This is the SKU for it, if you are looking for this specifically. I find that it has really good quality to it, really nice shine, the colors come out really vibrant. I actually recently um, experimented a little bit with one of my stickers by sticking it onto a suitcase. It took about eight journeys for it to receive any visible damage. Unfortunately, on our last trip from Spain a couple of uh, days ago, in fact, we encountered a bit of a storm, so all the suitcases got wet and soaked and... Ugh. And my ink is not waterproof, and I don't believe that this paper is waterproof. So, while the shape of the sticker itself was fairly intact and still attached to my suitcase, which is not what I can say for the other stickers that I had on, on there that weren't mine, uh, the ink came off, off it completely. So keep in mind that these are not waterproof stickers that we are making today. our sticker sheet printed it's time to set up the correct settings onto the software and make sure that the cutter works properly we do this by going back into the software go to the send while the cutter itself comes with an auto blade and these settings work perfectly with an auto blade I actually use a ratchet blade they are going to be the exact same settings for you however it is just going to skip the process of uh, changing the blade size onto my machine on its own. Instead it finds that the ratchet blade is already set to whatever cutting 
um, whatever blade setting I am already on. Next we are going to highlight this section here and remove the no cut and then we are going to re-highlight everything and click on cut edge. There we go. Now we have a basic outline around each character and that is where our cutter is going to cut. The difference between cut edge and regular cut or kiss cut as they call it is uh, when you soft cut through the top of the vinyl but not the back of the sheet for the kiss cut and this is going to cut both the vinyl and the back of the sheet to give us individual stickers. The settings we are using today, we are setting our blade to 5. If you are using an auto blade, the machine will change the blade to 5. If you are using a ratchet blade, you need to manually set your blade to 5 on the little circular knob on the ratchet blade itself. We are setting the speed to 8. We are not going for a very fast speed, we're just making sure that it is cutting properly. We're going to give it a force of 30 because of the thickness of the of the paper that we're using. It is a little bit thicker than your average planner sticker paper, so it needs a larger force. And we are going to give it two passes around the circumference of each sticker to make sure that it cuts properly. Everything seems to be set all right. We're just going to set the machine up and send us for a cut. This is our sticker sheet onto the mat. The mat will be going into the cutter, back and forward, and the blade is going to move around the sheet using the mat and cut the individual stickers for us. You can put the mat through this way or this way, even though there is no arrow here. However, not through the sides. You are recommended to use the edge of the sticky bit in order to make sure that your sheet is going in properly and not slanted. I make sure that my edges are alongside this corner. And uh, that's it, really. Next we are going to load the paper in simply by taking the mat, aligning it with this side here, make sure that it is pressed gently to the roller and click on the load button down here. That has loaded our paper in and now it is ready to take settings and information from the software and start cutting our sheet.
that is more or less it when it comes to the sticker cutting process. If you have any more questions or just curious about the machine or maybe something I have skipped or something you noticed you need to want to ask questions about, leave them in the comment section below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you found this video informative, please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. And in the meantime, take care of yourself. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.